What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Talking Script, the Guild Wars 2 News Podcast. I'm your host, Age, and we have a fantastic show for you this week. Uh, ArenaNet at San Diego Comic-Con, the winds are changing as an old event returns. Meteor showers in World Wars World will start hurting a little less next week and much more. But first, let me introduce you to my fellow host, he streams... Oh, he's a moderator over at MO Champion and a host to Zero to Hero and a host of Zero to Hero on this channel. With the Ellie bugs getting fixed in World vs. World, we hope that the change up will be for the better. Say hello to Jim. Uh, there will be no happy elementalists after this. Ever. Well, but yeah. everybody else will be happy. This is true. Maybe they make maybe they can use their tears for for water magic instead. We can only hope. And he streams over on Twitch, and I hope all is well with him today. Say hello to Aaron. Ah, hello, everybody. I want to thank my gracious host for accepting me to be on this lovely Guild Wars 2 television show. Oh, no, I'm not going to talk like that, guys. Uh, hi. Thank What's up? You. Excited about the show. <laughs> Did you catch the pun I, I put in? I, I miss it. What was the I, pun? I hope all is well. Oh, age. No. I mean, <laughs> you should have slid in a Shushadu pun, though. That would have been. That would How do I fit in uh, Shushadu? Never mind. I don't know. Listen, <laughs> you got to figure it out. That's your job. You Shushadu follow him over on twitch.tv. Oh, oh God. <laughs> and you can see his stuff over on Twitch and YouTube at MMO Inks. I forgot to pick him up by playing for PAX East, and he still won't let me forget it. He is our never. Canadian bacon of Guild Wars 2. So I hello to Inks. never let you forget it. <laughs> it's, it's one time. One time. Yeah, never, I know, I know. It's all it takes. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They w Delta would not let me land. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, Deo's out, and Arlie's out, so we have our lovely guests today, Aaron and Inks. Thanks for Coming on to the show. Uh, so uh, last week, I forgot to put it in the show notes. So this week, so Guild Wars 2 is at San Diego Comic-Con. So uh, if you're in the area, it, they are at Petco Park. You don't need to have a ticket for Comic-Con to go see Arena there. And the times are July 19th. Well, the dates are July 19th. 21st which is you know today at 10 a.m to 7 p.m pacific time and they're also there tomorrow july 22nd 10 a.m to 5 p.m pacific time uh so they have the uh, the griffin that's back that was at pax east so and they have the same contest again so you know share your pictures on uh gilbert's uh on um Twitter, Instagram using the hashtag guild wars 2 irl and guild wars 2 giveaway um, the GW2 giveaway, sorry. And you could uh, win an Amazon gift card. And this time that's new is they also have a food vendor. So actually, I'll pull up some pictures while we're at it. So I am I am very disappointed that that wasn't at PAX. Yeah, so uh, they offer a selection of Tyrian cuisine for purchase, but, you know, they just name the food after cuisine of Tyrion. So that's pretty cool. First of all, I have to say, and it's clear to me that there's a, at least a couple of like regular Guild Wars 2 Reddit type fans there because these were posted over on Reddit as well. How is it possible that somebody didn't order one of everything and do a food review? Wow, yeah, no, you have a point. That's that is, we need come on, that is Gold Star free Reddit gold right there. Uh, and YouTube gold content. People would watch the living hell out of that, number one. Can we talk about how sweet that truck is, though? I would want that. <laughs> it is a good-looking truck. Dude, how has someone not stolen that truck? That's, it's a, it, that's a really good... Uh, it's just I mean, it's the Guild Wars 2 art, and the Guild Wars 2 concept art has always been good, so... You should put that truck up on the store. Someone would pay for it. The also, other, the other um, thing is... I'm kind of surprised ArenaNet didn't do it themselves. Just make one of everything, lay it out, film, because like, they've been doing video the whole weekend. Wait, right? that's true. How did they not get Jennifer Hale back for another? Uh, I was just thinking. Of <laughs> <laughs> Have Jennifer I, Hale like in the truck. It was like, yeah, now we're we're making this today. I'm, I'm sure she's at SDCC. Like, she's got to be there. She could just can we just borrow you for a second? Cool, thanks. 
Yeah. Um, I'm also Deo level pun. The Choya's name is Gordon. G O U R D O N. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Well played. Just, just I, I figured everybody needed to know that. Um, and if you are there and you haven't seen the Griffin, that's like, I kind of feel like it's a really cool thing that you, you see the Griffin and it's to scale. And you got to think that like this is the size of the thing that your character gets on, right? And I think like its beak is like up here, and I'm like five ten. So it's it's a big friggin' thing. Yeah, I'm a little sad that I wouldn't that I'm not going to be able to see this thing. I think by the time I get to a con, it's going to be retired or something. Although I'm sure it costs them a lot of money to make. Dude, I bet they'll bring it to every con. Like until they launch a new X pack, they're they're going to run. They're going to well, use that thing. For sure, for sure. Bring a different mount. Um, maybe, maybe the Roller Beetle will be at PAX West, y'all. <laughs> or, you know, they could always just put, like, red, yellow, and orange streamers on, and it's a fire griffin. True. Promote that gem store scene, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little surprised they were at SDCC. Yeah, so they had a guild chat with marketing, uh, I think it was, like, a month ago, something like that. And they talked about the different marketing they're doing at PAX East and online marketing. And they also talked about going to San Diego Comic-Con. Um, so that was an interesting experience. And I think they went mostly because, you know, how families go to these types of conventions. I think this is actually a good way to, like, like have families go into the Petco Park. It's like, oh, let's see what's here. It's open. It's like, oh, what's this? And they all go over, check it out. And... You know, get info about the game, ride Griffin, get food, and I think it's uh, not a bad idea at all. It's interesting. I wonder... So the same criticism I had with PAX East is... I just... I wonder how, how much does this really influence a person to then go and find Guild Wars 2? I mean, it is a free game. Uh, yeah. I mean, the truck says so. It says play for free right there. Yeah, play for free all over the place. I know, but... That, it's one of those things where it's like, as long as you have eyes on it, it it kind of sits there in your mind. So, yeah, sure, they could just not go to these things, but then... Like, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that they shouldn't go. I just feel like there should be a display of the game somewhere, somehow, so you can play it or see... <sighs> More you know, like, you have a point. Yeah. It'd be it'd be kind of cool if like they had like monitors that had uh, say if they could somehow run code to have just like spectates on random PvP matches. If they could have recordings of people raiding and then some WW dub combat, just to show this is what you can do in Guild Wars Two. Yeah. yeah, if you're talking about stuff like that, I do agree that would be something to do. But I think one of the other things is like it's the same reason when people were like, why didn't they have like stations to play the game at at PAX East is just because they didn't have the room. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what kind of safety regulations they have with their location in the park since they're... Right, I, I imagine, <laughs> sorry, I imagine that this costs less than renting space on the actual STCC floor. By a lot, yeah. Floor, yeah, by a ton. Um, I guess I would expect them to be at TwitchCon as well then, maybe? It's entirely possible, actually, yeah. I mean, if they're going to be trying uh, September, uh, October, end of October, October. I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I could see it, but uh, hmm, it's very interesting. And then they'll be at they'll they'll be at PAX Prime most likely with the Griffin outside again. Yeah, and I, I think it's a good start. I just feel like they need a little bit more. Oh, I feel like they just need a little bit more to show off the game. Um, while you're there, because for me, when I'm walking around, a, let's say I'm walking around the convention floor or I'm walking around a convention in general, you see play for free games all the time or free to play games all the time, either or. How many of those do you actually go back and then try when you get home or back to your room or wherever? Zero for me. I never tried them. So I don't know. I'm just wondering how. I think they're. I think it's about the audience they're trying to appeal to, though. Like you're somebody who already has your game that you play, right? So it's highly unlikely that you're going to go home and be like, "Hey, maybe I'll try 
X, Y, and Z game. But somebody who's walking around that con like, man, I'm looking for my next thing that I'm going to dive into, right? That might be the person who does Maybe. go home and look it up. Maybe. I, I'm just, I, I guess for me, it's kind of like before Overwatch launched, I see everybody lining up for Overwatch. I'm watching them play Overwatch. You know, I'm standing behind the tape and I'm watching people play Overwatch. And I'm like, wow, that looks like a cool game. I'm going to go and look up Overwatch. Where this think, is kind of like, I don't know, I'm not seeing the game being played. I, I think it's one of those things where, like, the, the biggest compromise, I think that the only real compromise they can make for that is to just have video feed of the game being played. Because Inky Six brings up a point is that it's just like an RPG to play. It's, it's not so quick to pick up and put down for mm -hmm. anything. It's so. true. It's true. Although, I don't know. Do you think, like... Um... Do you think, like, the Heart of Thorns demo was good? I wouldn't know. I didn't get a chance to play it. I thought it was a pretty good representation of what you what you're going to experience. Was it was it basically the the beta, or like the the, the test weekends that we did? Yeah, more or less. More Same or less. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was all right. Um, I I liked the video feed idea though, because like they're outside here too, so that's gonna make. Sure. Yeah, setting up a, a PC station kind of weird, but um, it, like you're right though, uh, Inks and Malthanus, like at least some video would probably help, you know, because yeah, when you're walking up on a game and there's literally art for the game and a statue for the game and devs talking about the game, but there's no game, it's like it, it's kind of hard to sell that, you know. Um, I think it in particular San Diego Comic Con. I think it's less than. I think it's more likely that they don't have stations just because people really go for the con more so than a video game in and of itself. Like it's, it's, well, it's not a gaming con. So. Yeah, so, but I can see it for like stuff like PAX. So, um, now, something they could do, and I don't know how well this would play or not play, but they could set up a monitor or two run it off a small, a mini ITX machine inside the truck that just plays footage for a raid boss being yeah. killed or something yep. like that efficiently. Yeah. And Inky6 brings up points of uh, they had computers with the game up at other cons and the queue times were always horrendously long and that smartphones are a thing and you can easily Google up a game now. So i guess there's there's some pros and cons maybe there's stuff that we just don't know about or marketing in general about because the apparently the ah campaign worked for what they wanted to do to this day i still don't understand what the art target audience was but if it worked it worked so then we remember it yeah. we do we do. like even though even though we remember it in a negative light we still remember that quote and it is a meme for, for to do on, uh, any uh, online movies. I don't point. know if that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Still remember it. Fair enough. Fair enough. And and Inky Sticks brings up a good thing: tablets and smartphones. Um, Ninety-nine percent of the population is probably good with that stuff. I'm terrible, so that doesn't appeal to me. But probably everybody else it does. Yeah. And I'm not trying to knock it. I think this I'm... is a cool idea. I, I like the statue. I like the truck. I think the food idea is cool. Um, I'm just saying visual representation of the actual game would be nice. It could it could also be that this parking lot deal thing was like spur, almost spur of the moment and it's kind of maybe they're just doing it and it's not it's not like a full blown marketing stunt, but that truck must have cost a fortune, you know. So the, I don't know. The, the truck, the the metal frame that they have around the griffin, like it's not this is not a cheap it's not yeah setup. it's not a cheap setup it's a cheap premises but it's not a cheap setup so yeah it's it's kind of perplexing mm. yeah hmm. anyway i don't mean to criticize too hard i just feel like a little visual representation would be nice i have to swap your name plates because aaron blinked out for like a second and you know and you know what computers are i'm sorry Okay. Computers are so small nowadays that you could you could run this off of almost anything as far as like pre-recorded footage. Uh, you know they they've got computers smaller than this drive right here. You can see how thin this is, right? Like Rest bringing something size. like that and putting it on the back of a monitor is nothing. 
Yeah, no, there's no reason they couldn't ha have had some form of video display. So yeah, it's kind of unfortunate that maybe for people who came by who were curious as to what the game looks like could, couldn't actually see. Anyway. Really cool idea. Yeah, overall. I wonder, food is like. I wonder if the food is pretty good. Usually food truck food is pretty good. I think they had carnitas on there. I was like, I need to get down there. Yep. Uh, and they're partnered up with Lime California, whatever that is. Yeah. Something in California. Seems right. like. Right. <laughs> well, that seems like good stuff. But um, also, they had a, a, a mini guild chat at San Diego Comic Con. So you know, they talked about Griffin, the giveaways, and of course, a little bit about the upcoming patch, uh, which is Festival of the Four Winds, which, if you haven't heard, is coming back next week. So basically, everything that was in the first festival is coming back. So uh, Labyrinthine Cliffs, you have Sanctum Sprint, Aspect Arena, you have the Crown Pavilion, which has the Queen's Gauntlet, Boss Blitz, Sovereign Weapon Skins, and there's, uh, for those of you who are scared that it's just going to be like a repeat, it's actually going to have new things as well. So it's going to have new adventures, new races, new exploration challenges, new scavenger hunts, a new meadow of event that's modeled on the Abnoon Casino Blitz, uh, five new encounters to the Queen's Gauntlet, uh, which is pretty big, and yep. uh, a revamped Boss Blitz because, you know, hot and path of fire as uh new weapons and armor skins and uh, new achievements so that's yeah i just realized that both of these events happened pre heart of thorns the last time yep it's a long time ago yeah it was longer than it seems it was a longer time ago than it seems and you're like this is 2013 content, guys. And and Kate is right. New outfits for Ellen Keel and Queen Jenna, which are probably going to be on the gem store whenever this patch drops. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, um, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I miss these events, and I kind of hope that this becomes like one of their rotate, like one of their, their holiday events, like just always comes back every summer. I think they said it's going into rotation. I, yeah. I want to say I read that somewhere. I'd, it'd be a great idea, to be honest. This is something I've talked about a lot, to be honest. It's it's one of the things where in between the downtimes during Living Story or expansion time that they're working on it, they can pop one of these events in and just have people go at it for like a month or something like that. So I'm really, really happy about it for that specific reason. Um, and I think... Uh, I know Malthanus missed it, but like, has everyone else done these before? I think Aaron said he hasn't yeah, done. Yeah, I did. I did a. I get, did a decent chunk of it. I focused more on the boss blitz than on um, the like, the Queen's Gauntlet. But um, I still need to beat Leadric, guys. So I'm excited about getting another crack at her. And I did a lot of the Four Winds Festival and the Labyrinthine Cliffs and stuff. So I'm excited to get back there because that's to this day one of the coolest maps they've ever designed for the game. I've been here for both of these events. I did the the Jubilee, like the re up of it. I still have oh, a stack of okay. tickets for the Queen's Gauntlet in my bank. Oh, I'm, do I? I have blew all my days. tickets. So, did they do the Jubilee twice? They did it twice. Yeah, two Jubilees. All right, because the Festival of the Four Winds has been done twice as well. The first one was 2013, the second one was 2014 with the Crown Pavilion the second time around. Mm hmm interesting uh so yeah i was there for both of those i didn't i wasn't even making guild wars 2 content then um this was i started making guild wars 2 content for my channel 2014 like may 2014 and this was like earlier in the year or something like that i think mm -hmm. or no september i started making content in september and this stuff was like in may or august or something like that um so i started making content right after the second one of these so this should be interesting. It'll be the first time me actually covering it on the channel, on Twitch, and so forth. Um, we know that, uh, like Kit is saying, Matthew Medina is involved in the narrative, and there will be lore for the Zephyrites and what has happened to them. New lore. Which should be interesting, yeah. Alaska, I hope they keep the crystal finding. Like, I hope all of the old stuff is in along with new stuff, because I really enjoyed all of that stuff. They, they did say that the cliffs are going to be sort of a playground for mounts, 
which should yeah, be. Yeah, there are mount updates. Um, yeah. And that there's also some events that are Casino Blitz style events. So that should be interesting. Yeah, I think they referred to it. I don't remember what site the accompanying article was on, but I think they referred to it as a as a um as a meta style event for the map, the same way the Casino Blitz is for uh, Crystal Oasis. So I'm I'm interested to see what sort of implementation that will be. All right, so I want you guys to use your imagination about what the event could possibly be like, and I want you to pick one thing you're kind of excited for the most coming into this event. I want to see what they do with the... Um... Like, this is actually a really perfect time for a skimmer race in the labyrinthine cliff. That's actually not a bad idea, to be honest. Um, That's, there's no. so much water there. Hmm. All right, what about you, Inks? Uh, one, one thing. Probably, uh... Probably the Griffin race. Oh, Griffin race? You want? Griffin adventure, Griffin race, whatever you want to call it. I think they called it a Griffin race. Griffin mm -hmm. mastery. Or, whatever. Yeah, what, whatever. I actually really love those, uh, despite how long it usually takes me to complete gold. Um, so while I'm really excited for the whole Crown Pavilion thing, the, the Griffin adventure race, whatever, is what I'm most excited for. Hmm. OK. And Aaron? I'm definitely looking for forward most to the Twitter tantrum that I throw about the new bosses in the Queen's Gauntlet. <laughs> Guys, it's going to be an epic tirade, and um, I would encourage you not to miss it. But yeah, no, I'm excited about the new Queen's Gauntlet bosses, which is weird because I'm not much of a boss guy normally. Like, I don't like, I don't go in for raids and I don't go in for like top tier fractals, but I don't know. Something about the Queen's Gauntlet was always really fun to me, so I'm excited to see what the five new bosses are, what their mechanics are like. Um, I hope they, I hope they get really creative with them, because like this is a festival event, right? It's not like a hardcore raid or a fractal, so they can get weird. Like if there was a time to get weird with boss mechanics, it would be with this update. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, I, I love the fact that every time there's new content in the game, I look forward to your Twitter rants about how much you hate something about it. I have, listen guys, I've really refined the Twitter tantrum. Um, and it's it's become an art form that I'm, I'm quite high level in now. I, I'm not gonna disagree with that. <laughs> they are, they are. I'm not gonna deny it. Like it's, <laughs> it's just how it is. It's not a good thing and it's not a bad thing. It simply is, guys, it simply is. It just is. Yeah, um, for me, I think in particular it's going to be um, the completionist in me is going to want the sovereign weapons. I think I have one, if anything. But um, I'm also interested in the boss splits just because uh, there's going to be a lot of farming of that. Um, I'm going to be joining the farm train. They already fixed it so that you couldn't, you, you actually had to split up and take down all six at the same time. I remember that issue they had where people would just zerg every single one. Yes, like but you do realize I am a thief with the short bow, right? Yeah, I really want that to get nerfed. <laughs> just take thief out of the game. Just delete the whole profession. No, well, no. I, don't I think that would be. Game. I think that would be good game balance. That's <laughs> you, guys, that's how you balance games, right? You just delete things. Just, just delete an entire profession from the game. Yeah. Or forty percent of the damage on a skill. Oh, hey, never mind. We'll talk about that in a minute. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the new bosses um, and how farmable those are. We'll see. We'll see. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. And chat, if you have, uh, I see in chat, people are looking for the bosses and random marketplace vendors. Uh, the, so the thing that people should prepare themselves for is that it's likely that you're going to have to adjust your build for these specific one-on-one -on -one encounters because uh, your normal raid and fractal build and stuff like that won't be necessarily optimal for killing these bosses with um, uh, with like the special abilities that they have and so forth. Yeah, I remember. I remember like 
Necromancer with like life steal was a real big one for Liadri for a while to cheese it. Yeah, it was the cheese. As well as yeah. uh, there was a guardian build for the Dead Eye that you could fight there, where you had to like teleport in as he was shooting so that he didn't hit you and one shot you to to kill to harm him. So it'll be interesting. Uh, I think I got up to the encounter before Liadri. I can't. I know I never had the chance to beat the whole gauntlet, but I'm looking forward to giving it a shot again. Nice. Alrighty. Well, let us move on to the next thing, which is um. There's a there's a there was a little bug with LA's right now, and uh, with meteor shower that it's um pretty much obliterating people and zergs in Walrus mm -hmm. World. Um, so a lot of people have been complaining about it on the forums, Reddit, as per usual. People complaining on Reddit? No. I, I know. It's stop the presses, guys. Yeah, I know. It's surprising, but it happens. And uh, Turn so, off the internet. So there was a recent post on the forums, and it said the window for the hot fixing issue was missed. The fix will be going out with the next update, which is planned for this upcoming Tuesday. Damage is currently 60% above what's intended per strike and we'll be setting it back down to its normal levels. So yeah, I was confused about this at first because I was like, oh, they're nerfing staff again, but no, it's a bug that they're fixing. So that's fine. That makes sense. It's, yeah. I feel like it's, it's going to be a pretty big hit and then they're going to have to... Is it just happening in WW? Apparently, as far as I know, it's just happening in World Wars as well. Okay, then that's not going to be nearly as bad. Because if it was, it was, if it was happening in PVE, LA's wouldn't be as salty. I like how Jim's just like, oh, it's just in W Dub, whatever. <laughs> Screw those guys. I, I mean, <laughs> at a certain point, there are so many red circles that if you're going to get hit by one thing, you're going to get yeah. hit by a lot of things. So you're just oh. screwed anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because it's true. Nobody plays that. Yeah, and apparently there's uh, some other stuff that's been a little buggy that there's on, I can't confirm or deny these things, so uh, it's on the red post, so we'll link uh, in the video, but uh, there's one lightning storm, the glyph scale is currently reduced to 20%, uh, not 30%, uh, there's like different coefficients being used, and but Devs already know about it. It's, so it seems like there's a few little bugs here and there with LE. They, they did a pretty big comprehensive update to the way LE AOE does damage. So uh, I'm not surprised that there are some slight bugs with trying to get it all to work. Yeah. But they removed my 1 million DPS feature, though. So I'm so sad. Well, that's OK. Cause... I thought you might be bummed about that. Yeah. yeah. Prepare yourself for more nerfs coming up. <laughs> no, don't don't say that. For the thief? Do they yeah. do they need do they need pretty heavily nerfed in? Look, they're I... overtuned by quite a bit, in my okay. opinion. For I... PvE, for PvE, I... I can speak on the other game modes. Imagine I... if they tuned a class to the point where people were just like, "Yeah, you know, that's fine." Like, imagine if they just nailed it one time. That'd be crazy. Not like Guardian right now, to be honest. Is it? Oh yeah, because base Guardian's powerful now, isn't it? Well, Guardian is in a pretty decent spot right now, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. true that. I didn't really hit it much last time. It's there's there's a number of classes that are in that 32k on the Golem range. And I know that's not the only thing that you can measure a class on, because um, it's not just about raids, it's not just about fractals or whatever. You know, it's, it's not how you just do balancing, but that being said, if you're looking at tweaking the numbers, uh, Dead Eye, I believe it's Dead Eye, is way and above single target wise. And and there is some consideration to be taken about single target damage over cleave damage, but single target wise, right now it's just take Dead Eye. It's fine, Inks. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. Most it's classes fine. are doing about 32k ish. There's some classes and specs that need a bit of a bump. Uh, but Thief needs to... Thief is like 38, where the others are like 32. 
So there's a bit of a discrepancy there. Like, Ellie's have been over 40k for years. <laughs> I'm just saying, let me have this. Just, like, for six months at least. It, it may take that long. I mean, you know, these things aren't necessarily ironed out in a in a week, you know? Yeah. I will say, though, I um, there there is one thing that I was very surprised that they kind of kept. And then, is you have full Malice stacks and you backstab, at least in um, a PvP environment, you can hit anywhere between... 8k and 23k depending it's a very on your wide margin it's very yeah wide. so it, it it depends on your stats it depends on how much mouse you have I, so. I think that also might have something to do with the um because that gets a damage bonus from the rear of the target yeah well it, it's backstab critical hit so it's right but i think backstab also gets like a bonus to damage if you're behind the target mm, i don't remember that could also be something with like wonky turning. I know the Ranger project. does. Yeah. Thieves have a lot of flanking bonuses. But Marauder is like, I hit 13k. I'm like, Marauder gear. That's pretty funny. But anyway, it's hard to hit, so it's fine. It's uh, fine. It's fine. Um. Wow, we're blazing through this show. I feel so bad. I think that the, what will probably happen is I think that Thief will get a little bit nerfed. Um, hopefully, minor, not dev not devastatingly. So, I think Ellie will probably get a little bit of a bump just because people complain so much about Ellie. Wait, why would they get a bump? To be, to be fair, they're probably going to get a bump after they've got all of the fallout information from the change to the multi-hitting aoes because they wanted to change how the aoes function so that's not, it's going to hit elementalist damage so if they think elementalist is underperforming after that's all done they might get a small bump so well and i think too that players in general are not happy with how they've changed the way meteor shower works i, I see a lot of people calling for it just to be a meteor and not a shower, so that it's just one impact damage and not this overtime whatever. Because Arena Net doesn't seem to be able to... I still think that staff in its entirety on Elementalist needs to be reworked, but that's me. So. Yeah, and, and Kate's right. Elementalists want Sword to be bumped quite a bit as well, which hasn't happened. Yeah. In the same token, I think that they screwed up Epidemic I, I think that that was the wrong way to nerf it. Um, Brazil, as well as uh, quite a few other people for a long time now, have been saying the way to deal with Epidemic is to put a debuff on the boss that says you can't bounce off of it, rather than the way they chose to do it here, which is a little bit less elegant. I think, I think oh. it's one of the things that they don't want to introduce yet another unique buff slash debuff to the game. So they're doing it in such a way that it conforms with not adding that well yeah like on what jim's saying i get what they're tr like they're trying to be considerate and that they're trying to do something that says hey we're not saying you can't use this skill um we're just making it less effective but i also get what ink's saying in that it would just be kind of a cleaner um fix to the whole issue if they just made a debuff like that not so. just cleaner but you have to play more intelligently yeah to know who to bounce from and to. Hmm. So it's it's so basically what you're saying is you cannot cast epidemic on a target you or can. a missile or something. You, you, right? no, you, you could, wants... but it, it wouldn't allow you to bounce it like you normally do. So for example, let's say um, let's say Sabatha. So you cast epidemic on Sabatha to hit her minions. Right. The, the next necro, because there would be a cooldown, obviously, right? The next Necro has to hit the minion to bounce to Sabatha, not just keep hitting Sabatha again and again and again and again, like they normally would do. Well, isn't hmm. that the point where it goes from Sabatha to a minion and a minion to the Sabatha and then back and forth? Like I thought that was the point of the epi. right, but you don't have to, no, yeah, but you don't have to do that currently. No, the way the nerf currently works is it just falls off faster. Right. So you just keep hitting Sabatha, it just falls off faster, which means you do less damage overall. Hmm. Interesting. Because I, I I would bring Epi 
for kind of like what QD is saying is just like want to the cleave things that are not necessarily all grouped together, but are like within range so that you can get the condies on them with that be. I mean, I know it was great for slublings. Yeah. For sloth. Because you'd wait, because I, I remember, because I was the third slub, I was the, uh, yeah, I was the third slubling, and I remember getting hit with Epi, because I was a little too close to the boss, and it was just like, just well, shit, I'm dead. Hmm. Yeah. Would well, it, would it technically, could you technically balance it out by bringing more Condi to the table? I don't know. I, I, it's one of those things where it's like, I think that the epi... So, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. The whole epi bounce thing was you went from primary target to secondary target, and everything you did is you copied off of primary to secondary, and then the second necromancer copied from secondary to primary. And then you just continued stacking going back and forth like that. Right? You're supposed to. Okay, so basically what this change has done is shortened the power window for that. So you can still do a burst of stacking Condi with several bounces, but you shorten the window every time. So it's technically you can still do a little bit of burst damage with the standard epidemic bounce, but it's not as super powerful as it used to be. I, I, I mean, if they want to continue with this line of thinking, uh, I think they should. I think that the nerf was maybe a little bit too strong, in my opinion. But um, hmm. I don't know. It was pretty overpowered. But is that like? So, I think the problem, like, is is that the only reason you bring Necro just for Epi? Like, aren't like what's their TPS right now? Twenty eight five. Hmm. Without it's Epi, on, it's on the lower end. Yeah. Well, that's that's one of those things where I, th I feel like the, the epidemic... It's, it's one of those things where, again, Necromancer is kind of bumped up by a crutch. Like, by the, the, the specific use case of epidemic is they were held up by that. So, dropping this down would they allow... Still are. Epidemic will do anywhere from 2 to 5k, depending on the boss that's involved. So, um, they're still within reasonable range now. But, you, again, it goes back to... And maybe this is... Maybe this is really actually a good thing, but it goes back to more particular bosses rather than you just take on every boss. Right. Um, but if you're a Necromancer player, or let's say you're a Necromancer main, I could understand why you, just like Elementalists, I could understand why you would be upset when you're no longer cream of the crop, so to speak. I don't know. I, I'm someone who kind of always li liked those little quirks and group comps and games where you're like, oh, you take this class because they can do this cool little thing. Right, like that's that sort of thing I kind of enjoy, but at the same time, I can see the problem with literally just bringing them for this one ability. Like, that's kind of a problem too. But now they, it's it, from what you guys are saying, because I don't raid, right? Um, from what you guys are saying, it sounds like they've kind of nerfed necros out of raids almost. No, not no, oh, I wouldn't say that they haven't nerfed okay. them out of raids, but they've made them um less optimal yes, for what they're supposed to do in before teapot brings another 10-man raid through on challenge modes <laughs> i mean he could he could bring a 10-man raid through on white weapons though like to be perfectly honest right yeah i mean it's they're just it depends they're more optimal on particular bosses than they used to be optimal on a lot of things gotcha okay i just wasn't super clear on it that makes more sense hmm. And the bigger thing right now is that when you're stacking DPS, you're you're just taking dead eye. So you trade an elementalist for dead eyes. <laughs> and it's it's one of those things where I think at the same time, like when I was talking about the nerf to elementalist AOE multi hit AOE, not just like their flat AOE. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to be like they they slap this nerf in, which technically all the the multi hit stuff nerfed a lot of the abilities for Ellie. Yeah. The epidemic nerf, like they're gonna come back in after they get more data, and they're be like, "Okay, do we need to buff them? Do we need to buff them somewhere?" So they'll get there. It's yeah. it's it's an iterative process. So it's it would be really bad to buff something at the same time you nerf something because then you have no idea what affected the the profession in the way you want it to. Yeah. So 
Personal and environment QED, like QED sort of okay. sums it up perfectly here, where they say that uh, the initial epidemic is still great for Cleve. The balance is just not worth it anymore. And um, some people some people think that that is great. That's a good thing. I'm a little bit sad by that. Uh, I I think well timed bounces were sort of fun. So it makes me a little bit sad, but um, you know I guess it technically works. Yeah, I I personally think that as long as all professions can do within like 30k, it's it's fine because like uh, there are options for people to play, and I think that's the major thing uh, when when it comes to Guild Wars two in particular because you want to play like the profession you want, right? And as long as there's a build that can you know get that damage out so that you can succeed in raids, I think it's fine. Uh, well, that's just personal preference. Mm. The man seems reasonable. reasonable. So Kate, you can still bring Ellie. Yeah, well, don't I, ever let anybody tell you you can't bring Elementalist. And and here's the, here's the other thing that I think is really important that people need to, I think a lot of people do understand this, but I think it still needs to be said, is that a lot of times when you're talking about these discussions, and you're talking about stacking Deadeye, for example, because it does the most damage. That's the most optimal optimal meta comp you can have. It doesn't mean it's your only choice. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to clear raids because that's ridiculous. They're, they're very soft. Um, it just means that if you want to do the most damage, if you want to go the fastest or whatever the case is, then this is the optimal meta composition. Uh, and unfortunately for pugs, they some of them tend to die by the sword, so to speak, and try to force that silly uh, expectation, which is never going to really last in a pug environment most of the time. But, you know, somebody did say, uh, Mag did say that a lot more builds have become a lot more viable now, and that's true. The damage, the damage in the 32K realm, 31, 32K realm, is a lot more diverse right now than it has been even before. It was fairly diverse before. But um, speaking from an optimal perspective, you just traded Ellie for Deadeye, basically, on not big, hot, big box get encounters. Yeah. OK, cool. I mean, that doesn't <laughs> sound like the end of the world. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh... Uh, well, uh, think about it, Aaron. Like, Ellie's have been on top for, like, a long time, right? Yeah. So, um, like, they're the only time they kind of got dethroned when that Necro was doing a little bit more, I think, or doing close to them. But In some ways, it's a good thing because it's much easier to be bad at Elementalist and not hit those DPS targets. And it's much easier to be better with... Um, dead eye and and be more consistent at hitting your dps targets now so like ellie's a little bit more complicated to play properly than dead eye is so in some ways it's kind of better more consistent maybe yeah there is more reliable and more consistent i got you yeah. well, any final thoughts before we move on well just just another point is that something that QED brought up is that, that rewarding different specs with the same damage regardless of the skill required to play them. Yeah, I could see that because the like did our, did our rotation when, Whenever we talked about um, Mesmer when they made the Phantasm change, when people would just summon three Phantasms and just hold, just, just let them sit there DPS. So that was like basically a brain dead a brain dead DPS build that you could just here is all of my damage. I really don't have to do anything. So when you've got that, and then you've got the traditionally high high mental capacity thing that you have to do to do Condi engineer, and you just have to play like all like you have to play DER with your keyboard, and you're just every which way with your keys. Um, I mean, sure, some people enjoy playing that, but it kind of feels like at some point being able to sit there and just press one skill versus pressing all the skills, there should be some kind of distinguishing factor there. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, for example, uh, Condi Soul Beast is fairly easy to play. You, you use all your skills. There's a particular order to it, don't get me wrong, but it's, you know, it's a lot less complicated than, say, Engineer or Elementalist. That being said, there are, um, I don't know about Ellie, but specifically for Engineer, there are more simplistic rotations that trade 1,000 or 2,000 DPS for not having to worry about, you know, pressing a whole bunch of buttons or whatever the case is. That's the Aaron rotation. That's mine. Give me that right, one. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there is a concern among in, in the community, which I think is what Jim was getting to. There, there is a concern in the community that playing the more complicated classes or doing the more complicated uh, rotations don't necessarily net you a higher DPS, which is what some people prefer. Oh, I can understand that. I think Myself, I like easy rotation. I, I, one of the reasons I loved Power uh, Herald was because I pressed like three buttons and that was, that was it. <laughs> what was that? That was just sit and hammer all the time and just, just swing you drain it out, you know. But yeah, like you had three weapon buttons that you would use and the others were useless. But yeah, I, I don't know. You press two every now and then. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I understand. Uh, where where people are coming from in that regard, because you figure if you're working your butt off to perform the rotation properly, you should be rewarded with higher DPS. Um, I can, I kind of see the pros and cons with it as well, just because you know this is Guild Wars where you know it caters more to uh like on the easier side, the casual side a little bit. So having that. Reducing that barrier to entry is kind of good in terms of raids, but uh, I could also see that the people who like raid day and night, they want to, you know, perfect their their craft and their rotations and they feel like, and I, I, I do agree that, you know, higher DPS output should be rewarded for having to learn something very difficult, but then I feel like it comes down to um, professions and how they work and, and that's like a whole field of I don't know so uh, I feel like at, at some point it's I don't know if this is ever going to be actually possible with balance but I feel like every profession should have like that here is your easy DPS here is your skill based DPS and there should be a marked difference in the output but your easy DPS is basically like, if you don't die, this is the this is the spec you play if you're still trying to learn how to stay out of red circles. Mm -hmm. Like if you're still learning mechanics, this is a thing you can play, and then you can transition to this one where you play better, you have the muscle memory to avoid the mechanics, and then you can focus on your class mechanics and get better at that, and then your entire group benefits from it by getting faster because you do more damage. That's that's like the optimal kind of example of balance. And again, like I said, it's it's kind of a pipe dream kind of thing because there's always gonna be shit that makes yeah. that a little wonky. What? But mm -hmm. yeah, very do you do you think skill splitting kinda would help in this? Not not necessarily just for like the easy hard rotation, but for rewarding harder rotations with better DPS. Well, that's the thing is, what do you skill split with? Yeah. Like, are we, are we talking like skill splitting from PvP and PV and WW? Because, like, the only problem is PvE is raids and fractals and overworld. Yeah. An overworld, you can pretty much play whatever you want, right? Yeah. When it comes to fractals and raids, you kind of want to play oh, depending on what your job is, right? So. Uh, and Magnus, that's technically 27 specializations because core. Yeah, it, it's, I, did, it, I, I did have a question that somewhat <laughs> relates to the whole skill splitting um, idea. Yeah. Um, we talked a lot about um, these effects on PvE, but did this balance patch have any significant effects on PvP? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Because I know, guys, I don't play PvP, so I like know nothing about that. So you play, have you played Condi Necro? Not me, no. Okay, so they have, like, the, the one thing that they are doing specifically is if you take Scourge, 
Doomfire, the Shroud skill one causes burning. If you take Scourge, it has a five second internal cooldown. Is that some, that's new? In is that PvE, like a big deal? W -dub. That's brand new with this balance patch. It's one second in PvE. It used to be. Ah, uh, okay, so that's a pretty violence. hefty nerf then. Yeah, and that's just um, the other one. Uh, it's a minor trait in corruption. I can't remember what it is, but if you take Scourge, it goes from corrupting two boons down to one. Path of Corruption, I think it is. Ah, uh, okay. Because, yeah, Scourges were. I mean, I know people can, like, people who do those game modes can fight. You know, you learn to, to deal with what's coming at you. But, like, from my perspective as a person who just gets bodied in those things, like, scourges were a serious issue for me. So that's sort of heartening on my end. <laughs> um, scourges were... Uh, scourges proved to continue, to continue to be oppressive, but all of the nerfs that they have received in PvP have made them bearable. Um, I kind of always compare Scourges to the way dead, uh, Dragon Hunters were when their traps still dazed. Because you you literally would walk onto a point and the Dragon Hunter would just kind of rotate his traps and it would just be like days, half second days, half second days, half second days, and then they were running Rune of the Trapper, so if they wanted to leave, they would just drop a trap, stealth and super speed out. And you wouldn't be able to do anything because you were dazed. Yeah. So. So Scourge is less stressful now for uh, player versus player combat. It's still strong. It's still mm -hmm. good zone control. Still you still have to. What's that? Still cancer. <laughs> well, I mean, their whole point is corrupting boons. So that's it's kind of like. The they're going to they're gonna drop red blinking AoEs all over the place, give you an aneurysm, and uh, you're going to be loaded with conditions even after... Actually, you literally described my experience with Scourges, so that was yeah. very accurate. Well, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, your, your best bet is if you are pure melee, you just walk around the Scourge and you go take another point. If you are ranged, you, you basically just set target on the Scourge and you blow all of their defensive cooldowns and then they die. Yeah. Because they still you have the same out. problem. Yeah, they still have the same problem as Necros, is they have no mobility. Yeah, you have so. to bait, you bait out their skills, and then you just kill them, because they've got nothing to fall back on. I like how that's a strategy for Scourges, just ignore them like an annoying bully at school. Just like, yeah, just yeah. don't talk to, don't engage. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of times they get singled down pretty quickly because of how annoying they can be. The difficult part is when you, when you pair a Scourge with a healer type, then they become... This God. this balance patch has helped <laughs> with that. Um, firebrands are not nearly as onerous as they were with the healing nerfs to Tome of Virtue. Mm. Um, honestly, I, I often find that Tome of Courage is probably the, the worst offender just because it's like, here, have a free reflect whenever. Here, have a free stability. Here, have free resistance in a giant AoE. They're Resistance AoE on Tome of Courage basically covers the, the whole point in Faux Fire, and that's like the double size capture point. Damn. So uh, it's it's great that they have all that supportive capability because it's kind of Guardian's thing, but at the same time, it's like when you were trying to fight a Dragon Hunter when Traps Dazed, it's like, I can't get them off of the point because they have all of those blocks, so I can't fight them from off the point. I can't fight them on the point because I'll die. I mean, there, there was a point in time when Heart of Thorns released, I walked onto a point with a firebrand, and they didn't, like, they didn't even move. Like, their character didn't even rotate. They didn't acknowledge that I was there. Because That's they, the most insulting part, yeah. Because they didn't have to care about <laughs> it. And yes, it's that a, is... It's, embar it's embarrassing. Yeah, no, it happens to me it's, every it's, time I enter WW. So, I... I think that the the tiny nerfs that they have been getting in pvp and ww -dub are good like it's good that it is a slow walk back i no longer think that maybe scourge and firebrand are just bad for pvp just via class design well Condi mirage got a bit of a boop as well right yeah. um axes of symmetry yeah basically axe got drunk. not as not as much as people would have liked but it's not that bad. Uh, but then again, I'm playing Hollowsmith, and I just have all of the AoE, so half the time their clones really can't do anything. 
that's that's really the that's always been the counter to playing against mesmers is just kill the clones before they can do anything with them so is uh is condi mirage still strong in pve uh, not really mm. not really okay I gotta go change my mesmer build then. <laughs> like, like probably in it's okay. It's okay. grinding, but it's not like crazy good. It's the only no, problem. No. Most of your damage is through confusion and torment. Yeah, yeah. So you're always going to be better at PvP because of that. Yep. Yeah. And then, like, I still laugh at dual pistol thieves. Oh my god, they wreck me. If they catch well, you, now it's. Uh, uh, laughs in magnetic aura like that's that's been my entire thing is anytime I have a reflect it's just like kill yourself literally oh yeah did, I actually did notice something I don't know if this was in the most recent balance patch or like one of the more recent ones but um, the tool belt skill on elixir x for engineers no longer gives you a reflect wall and that's a yes. bummer uh, it, but it gives, but it gives you quick. It gives you quickness. So it's it's an AOE stun break and quickness. Yeah. So like I'll take it. But man, I liked that uh, reflect wall and that. That was screen. they took away all of the randomness from all of the elixirs, save for the elite one. Yeah, it was just a bummer because that was. You know what? I I take it back. Uh, Mirage condition no confusion is thirty two, so it's fine. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay, maybe I'll leave it then. To, to be fair, you were going to leave it anyway because you're not going to gear another character. No, no, I'm not. Not at all. <laughs> at least he's honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah you just got to be honest about it sometimes, guys. I'm super lazy with builds. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're still rocking dual pistol on your on your NG, so... Oh, all, all day, every day. But... I... You want to know what's really sad is that... Uh... Condition Shortbow, Shortbow, Soul Beast does pretty much the same as Shortbow, Dagger Torch. <laughs> I, I really, <laughs> I, I, I was kind of having a hard time every time, I, like, what is it, S, what is this SB3 that I keep seeing? Uh, what is, short, uh, well, Shortbow 3, probably, I don't know. Because Shortbow 3 on Ranger is the hop backwards. Because I've played uh, enough I, with my Shortbow. I, I don't know what that, I don't know what that's in reference to, but. You can run I know people were talking bows. about it in chat, so it's chat. You can run dual short bows, and uh, it basically does the same amount of damage. Yeah, no, anytime you can run two of the same weapon, uh, no, get rid of that. Like, that should not be a... Like, because you you share your... Because it's literally just playing for weapon swap sigils at that point, right? Yeah, yeah no. And, and to be fair, <coughs> like Kate is saying, it, oh, double short bow so has been... Um, Oh, shortbow, shortbow, soul piece. It's okay. okay. SB three. That makes okay. sense. Then. Um, that's you know, SB three has always been very, very, very close to the dagger torch version, but it's it's literally only one k difference right now. And in a raid, in a live raid scenario, it's it's gonna not even be that's that. Long. <laughs> like it won't even be that. Yeah. That's interesting. Huh. But yeah, ever since they've been nerfing Bonfire, it, it's been coming, I guess. Like, yeah. honestly, I swear, I think uh, Torch needs a rework then. Like, because because Bonfire, it's a giant, long-lasting fire field. Yeah. Like, everybody's going to use it for Condi because burning does the most Condi damage. Sounds I mean, like it should be used for storytelling. Well, a while. There you go. Stay a while and listen. But anyway. It's great for new players, I guess. That's that's the example that for my my you know optimal kind of balance is like you have a super easy build to play that rewards you, but then again, like Yeah, you're right, Savage, is once somebody moves once a target moves, you lose the damage because you're not just standing in the bonfire. I, I just Yeah, shortbow, shortbow does not care. And then you also get a crap ton of... I would hope that you take the shortbow trait for that because you're running double shortbow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if, you, if Kate's saying you have to be flanking because you get a crazy number of flanking bonuses from the shortbow trait. Um, I just... The other build wanted flanking as well, too, though. But. Well, I... 
anything Condi with a ranger is going to have short bow. I would hope because there's just so much because the auto attack is a crazy long bleed if you're flanking. So I don't know. That's it's it's in a weird place, and I think honestly, I think a lot of the core weapons need uh, a pass. Like a lot of the the core profession weapons probably need a, a, a design pass just for in general. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I mean, I really don't think it's the it's not the end of the world or anything. No. I think it's just an amusing. And it's it's not like I think that every single weapon needs to be completely reworked like I think staff does for elementalist, but. Like Parasol Beast actually does the most damage right now for Ranger. So, please tell me it's Greatsword because I love using Longbow Greatsword. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Greatsword. Yes, QED runes. We were having that conversation as runes need a pass too because I think it was either you or Savage that was saying that it's like only eight of the runes are really used in any meta builds. Yeah, it's Sword Axe, Greatsword. Yeah. Like honestly, I love the the um, the two five two combo on the greatsword. It's crazy good in PvP because people don't expect it, and then they get hit with the stun, and then you get the the re up on opening strike, and it's just. Then again, that's if you're using the the core ranger build that I used in PvP. No one's going to ruin Mad King runes, Inky. I that would be mad. I I think boots would riot. I say delete. Them. Oh, in that case, yeah, delete them. <laughs> uh, I mean, ruin every Boots Bad Build show because every Pretty time much. he says runes, wooden potatoes is like, they're Mad King runes, aren't they? Yeah. Well, well Boots ruins my life half the time with this build, so I'm, I think I'll take the hit. Well, at the very least, they nerfed the Might Makes Right build. I, I would be surprised if they win. And I, I've been saying for years that they need to do a rune sigil rework, but I would be surprised if we ever. Uh, I would like my runes on legend. Work. I would like my sigils on legendary weapons to be swappable. I was just gonna say, which one do you think they'll do first? Make them swappable or give them a rework? Uh, I don't think they're gonna. Uh, I don't think either. <laughs> Neither. The reason I say that. The reason I say that is because they did make a change to legendary weapons uh, and armor, where you can just pop the new one in, and the old one pops into your inventory. So I don't. I think that's their solution. I don't think they're ever going they, to make it selectable. I don't think they did that with weapons. They yet. didn't do that with weapons. No, is it just armor? I don't. Yeah, it's just the armor and the trinkets. Really? Unless yeah. I missed a patch note. I could have swore it was weapons as well. Maybe I'm that wrong. That seems like a huge discrepancy. That you can like, hey, you can do this on this legendary stuff, but not on this legendary stuff. Sorry. Well, I think it's just because they haven't what? gone back to, like, I think they said that, you know, but the economy, the first time somebody asked about it, and it's just like, I feel, uh, I, I guess, but runes are part, part of the economy as well. I guess the jewels oh, are more too, but. The economy but like, is already in the toilet, so I don't know that. Force? Uh, uh, sigils of force are what, like 15 gold? I thought they were like five. I thought they were five. Oh, they dropped again? Okay, the yeah. last time I tried to buy them, they were like between five. four and five, yeah. Because I think, yeah. what's the most expensive, like concentration, I guess? Probably. I always thought it Let, was... Let's just put it this way. I switch, rune, I, I switch runes so unoften, so, so few times, so that, I just, that, that uh, I thought that it was already swappable. <laughs> well, yeah, I know because um, there's some QED was complaining about on in my stream chat the other day um, that he doesn't want to get legendaries because the runes aren't swappable and he swaps runes like five times a day or something crazy like that. Why? Oh, so he has what? No, he has swapped runs running instead. Running different builds and stuff like that. He must have like a different weapon sets instead, which is what I do too. Because yeah, uh, keep multiple weapons with it, yeah. Because I have incinerator for power and I have viper daggers. Are they the dragon comma? No, there are the ones you get from Calibold. Do I'm you surprised. still hold the dragon commas upside down, like comically terribly? Yes. yes. Oh boy. Sorry, I had to bring that up. So you yeah, like swipe like that. Yeah. Uh, it looks so weird. I'm gonna get Cog Hunter, and it'll be the same thing. Is that how you're supposed to hold them though? 
Age, yeah. stop making ugly legendaries. I, I if even if that is the way you're supposed to hold them, it looks weird. I don't know. I don't like it. Maybe I'm just <clears throat> maybe I'm just terrible. For comma, <laughs> normally you'd hold them like you'd hold like a short sword, not not reverse. Yeah, them. you'd hold it pick end upward, right? <laughs> yeah. Twenty two axes. Holy cow. Jesus, QED. Do you need, yeah, well, QED's a monster build swapper. <laughs> like, I knew that already, but I didn't... No, I didn't why? Why do you have that many? 11 setups for axes, because, at least? Because he likes to, to theorycraft. I mean, the, he's he's behind the... Um... Okay, well, theorycrafting, I can see. Okay, that. yeah, that's that's fine. Like, I QED, thought, like, QED 22 like, axes in a daily rotation of... Well, I'm doing fractal 84, so I better switch my... Uh, to Act 17. Fractal thing. <laughs> Yeah, upgrade ext extractors are a thing, but they cost gems, and they, they cost are... they cost like hundreds of gold and gems. I mean, there's an endless one that costs like thirty six hundred gold, and it's like okay, if you want to get that, it's basically like getting two more legendaries, you know, just to be able to swap runes on your legendaries. Fractals, reverse world, and raids. So yeah, that's like, fine. Three different builds. Maybe four. Oh, no, no. He has multiple builds inside each of those. Well, you can have two builds for World vs. World. Roaming and... I'm talking about one class, not... It's like build section. Right. But what if he wants to run, like, the new Flag Banner Warrior? Or... Fractal Vendors give yeah. them for... Or something for, like uh, that. Infusions. Yeah. I don't think the Fractal Vendors have ones for standard upgrade extractors. They have infusion extractors. Yeah. I know there, that much. There are no sigil extractors. No, well, in Black Lion Chess. And Black Lion Chess and Jump Star. I, I got guess. a bunch from that, but I don't switch very often, obviously, right? Yeah, as far as I know, the only extractors that exist are the infusion extractors through Fractal Vendors. Yeah. You guys are all crazy. I, I have nothing in my inventory. <laughs> it's empty, pretty much. Same same hearing, so I keep like <laughs> maybe 10 slots of my inventory full and the rest is empty. <laughs> I have a lot of extra junk on my Guardian, but that's just from like building the the runes the druid rune stone and some other junk from other maps actually one of the oh, most gosh. common comments i get in my stream is wow your inventory is so empty and i'm like thank you yeah That's mine, you i get that a lot too to, you need room to be able to sell stuff i i know aaron farms a lot so that's why he has all the room yeah i gotta keep oh. it clean guys gotta keep it clean yeah uh, I, I don't know for me so i i have a i Currently, for my ranger, who is the one I play the most, I have my druid set that um, I, I could change in between fractals and raids to be a little bit, bit better in raids, but I don't because it really doesn't matter that much. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a I have a full condi set if I decided I wanted to play condi. I could play SB3 or I could play Dagger Torch. I could play either one. Yeah. That sits in my bank because I don't really use it that often. I don't need to carry that with me necessarily. As far as World vs. World and stuff, I have specific characters just for that game mode. Oh, uh, okay. Carry. I don't need to carry that other stuff, you know? But I started thinking about it a little more, and I think the reason Arena doesn't want to make legendary weapons have sigil swapping is because you would just have that one weapon, so you wouldn't have the need to make other weapons. You would need Delgemore or Spirit Wood or anything like that. I think that's what they meant by Kami. But the... The difference is for le legendary armor, it's super hard to get. Well, it's not super hard. It's super. Uh, you have I mean, to work I mean, really, really hard to get it. Yeah, versus, it's a large time sink, right? Like yeah, versus legendaries. I, yeah, but, the question I would ask would be: Did they think? And I don't know how many. I don't know what percentage of the population has legendaries, right? But do they think that the, or from what they can see, is the population of the player base that has legendaries? large enough to actually impact the economy in a visible negative way if for weapons digital swapping maybe maybe yeah for weapons uh, other, yeah gen other, ones are easy to get that's true gen ones are real easy so. the other thing you think about is that if you have swapping rune sw uh, sigil swapping on a legendary you've got say you have like a warrior i think that's the broadest number of weapons that can that can be wielded is a warrior you have to get a legendary of every single type of weapon that a warrior can wield. And then you have to be able to buy all of the sigils that you want to swap in and out. So that's like the kind of investment that would be like 
getting legendary armor at the same point. Or you're going to get one legendary that you use the most often, and then you're going to swap out of that, but still you have to buy all those runes. And then you've got all of the other weapons that you use that you're probably going to make Ascended for. And then Kate also brought up for the point that how often do you actually craft an Ascended weapon anyway? There are so many other ways to get an Ascended weapon. Nowadays, I mean, I, I craft them a lot because I don't play... If, if, you're a, if you're if you're a straight up PVE player who does not do raids or fractals, it's probably. But that's the thing is yeah. you have to not do raids or fractals. Well, and I'll say this much too. Nowadays, um, nowadays I says, wouldn't I wouldn't craft because I do enough content that I can get it and drop. It takes a long time still for me because I don't do full raid clears and so forth. But back probably when was ascended. Brought in three years ago, four years ago, and actually end of 2013, I want to say. When 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 ascended weapons first came out, within that first year, I probably crafted eight or nine uh, weapon sets for every character I had. So at some point, I crafted, you know, I don't know how many weapons each character can use, and that was just back when core was available, not elite specializations. But I crafted at least one ascended weapon for each of those because the drop rate back then wasn't quite as good as it is today uh, it wasn't quite as easy to get either so at some that point you weren't luck capped <clears throat> it's true i wasn't luck capped but um you know at some point i think for a new player they're bound to craft maybe one or two ascended weapons but maybe not wet maybe you know I, armor maybe less but probably for weapons i would say some people oh it's that. it's one of the number one new goals every new player has like one thing i like to do um when I, while I play is watch new players streams. Um, and I was kind of chat with them about what their goals are. And uh, most of them say, well, I want to get some ascended armor crafted. Um, so it's definitely something that new players shoot for. Now, some of those people are going to figure out that they can get it through fractals, you know, but I think a lot of them are going to craft it too. Yeah. I feel like until they figure out different methods of getting them and the methods that they like, like for example, in chat, they're saying to quaddle and triple trouble worm. Right. Like until they actually discover those methods, they're probably going to craft them, which is a pretty decent majority of the population. And, and well, I mean, that comes down to pretty harsh RNG, I think, unless it's changed over the years. I've only ever seen two ascended drops from Triple Trouble and zero from Squaddle. Yeah. And, then, and I. Uh, oh, go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. But then you've also got to, to offset that now is now you've got the Heroes Anthology. Where before, if you wanted a different stat set on an ascended weapon, you'd have to craft a new ascended weapon. And now it's, no, you just craft the sigil of the stat set you want in the exotic quality, and then you stat swap it. Yeah, sure, you lose the sigils, but you don't have to spend the time farming up the... It's super chill. Yeah. yeah. Apparently PvP is easy as well. Yeah, see, I haven't really looked yeah. at PvP nowadays but yeah i have no idea how you get ascended gear in pvp it's actually. the same way you do it in ww you get tokens and then you have to craft the um, grandmaster crafting marks and then you can buy it from a vendor oh okay the only I mean, does that, does that cost a shitload of materials also, though? <laughs> god how uh, terrible is that uh yeah. it costs the grandmaster marks cost the half ascended quality stuff that is still like, I, I really hate the fact that they introduced those recipes in the game because they're literally only used for the Grandmaster Marks. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, I remember listening to you rant about that on a different episode. I've ranted about it on several episodes, so... This is a gold-caliber rant. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I think nowadays, 2018, getting Ascended is not... Like, you don't have to craft it if you don't yeah. want to. Like, unless you want no, to you don't. up or something. But um, back in the day, I definitely crafted a lot of it. Well, and one thing I was going to add is that um, it's also a speed thing. I'm like, I'm coming up on a goal to get, I, I still don't have ascended armor on all my characters. It's an issue, but um, I'm just going to craft it all. And that's because I don't play raids and I don't play fractals and I want it really fast. Right. And like, like they said, yeah, you can grind to quaddle and triple trouble, but that's RNG and I'm not down with that. So I think people, I don't think there are a lot of people like me, but there are people like me who would rather just get it ASAP. And just grind silver waste for like a couple of days and have all of it. I know I'm. I know I'm working on that myself. Um, there was a time where all my characters were fully ascended, everything. But then I deleted them and deleted all the armor. Yep. <laughs> I, I just. So I'm reworking on that again. 
but I'm not oh, spending any money on it, right? I'm not I'm not crafting anything this time around. So I'm doing it the RNG way, which is taking more than a year at this point. Yeah, see, and I'm like, I want all this done in like two weeks. So yeah, I'm just gonna hit it stand and silver waste really hard. On the other hand, I'm comfortable playing one character until the server shut down. So for me, you know until you I, delete that character. Well, yeah. So if I get tired, I just move everything over to another character because most of it is legendary. Mithrin, there's nothing that can stop him from deleting a character. Well, I, superhuman strength when it comes to it. <laughs> well, as ISP can, I guess. I, I, um, I do want my birthday gift, so that's why Tom has never been. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So Fair enough. I get my one birthday gift. <laughs> oh, I need to check another character in a month. <laughs> you mean you don't have the meta eight characters created all on Head Start Weekend launch day? No. I did. I did. Guys, get, give it the but, program. You know, not anymore. I had five. And then I only have two. Yeah. Yeah, good times. Anyway. Wow, that was a discussion that... That conversation was a journey, guys. It was all over the place. Yeah. It's gonna be it was a legendary journey. Oh. I can't but it wasn't it. it wasn't sigil swappable though. I can't change the code. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, the key farmer. I forgot to do my key farm this week. Gosh darn it. Uh, prepare yourselves for a new black lion chest come Tuesday. Uh, I would expect there to be one. So maybe my favorite aspect of Guild Wars Two ever. Black lion chests. Yeah, yeah, they're the best. Speaking of spending money, uh, gem store updates. Oh. I don't know if I actually took off the sound, so I'm going to make sure I don't play people's ears off real quick. Because, yeah, that's what I thought. All right, I, I remembered. I do this for you guys. All right, so the first thing is the Desert King Backpack Glider Combo. It's 700 gems, uh, and it features two separate dialable trails. So the, the wings up top that you see that kind of go outward and then the wings that go, that are under them that are kind of curved, those can form two different trails when you dive them. I have to say it's a pretty nice glider in and of itself. But, but not a nice back piece. Back piece is kind of flamboyant, I guess. I, it's it just was, weird. If it was like... 20 to 30 percent smaller i think I'd yeah like. it's too big but the glider's sick uh, age is absolutely right the glider's dope also uh, as per usual you can't die back pieces so if you change the color of your your glider it's not going to match the back piece fail yeah. yeah did you guys see um that shaman's post about the texture that's in the trail on this oh. glider there's, yeah, a, a there's a hieroglyph. There's a yeah. There's a hieroglyph texture in the trail, but it's pretty much invisible unless you like zoom in really close. So it's kind of pointless almost. <laughs> and yeah, card effects also has a good point. I feel like it should sit lower on the back for the back piece. Yeah, yeah, I could go with that for sure. Yeah, it's just too, it's what like what you said though, Jim. It's just too big. But yeah, I love the glider itself. It's really cool. Feels bad. I have to move names again. Yeah, I cannot see the hieroglyphs at all in the trail. Oh, are there? Uh, that shaman did a post about it on uh, on his Twitter. I don't know if he posted it anywhere else, but um, yeah, apparently in the trail there are um, there's a really tiny, minuscule hieroglyph texture. I need to bump that a little Let me bit. See if I can find the tweet. I, I remember the tweet from that shaman, but yeah, I can't see it in the video that Dolphy has here. That'd be pretty nice. She also says it dyed blue, so maybe that's a, an issue. Like, I kind of feel like that needs to be the like more like a larger particle effect that comes off of it instead of it just just being a trail. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. No. Yeah. So, seven hundred gems. Would you guys get it? Yes, no, maybe so. I don't have a character it works with, so I passed on it. Pretty much, yeah. I think the last glider I bought was the Beast Hunter one, but that's because my warrior uses Beast Hunter weapons skins exclusively, so it fit. But yeah, this standard price for a backpack glider combo, if you've got a character that it fits with, 
Go for it's it. a good it's a good pick for Alona themed characters, which a lot of people do with all also, the UF armors and stuff. If you really like the um the one awakened outfit, this would fit really well with it. The, oh, yeah. the ninja mummy butterfly outfit. Yes, the ninja mummy <laughs> butterfly outfit. Yeah, it's one of the, it's maybe the worst outfit ever. So I have wow. an Alona themed character, but I got the beat the scarab beetle back piece and glider. Which has the die problem as well, unfortunately. Um, and I've been using that because it came out of the Black Lion chest. I think the glider is cooler on this one, but I, I'm not going to spend You're it. Uh, yeah. I already have my Egyptian back piece, right? I literally. Mm -hmm. just out. Yeah, no, I like, I, I actually did consider buying it, but I decided that the glider is so different. Um, thematically from anything that I'll be wearing on any of my characters that it would just look too weird with my back piece turning into that when I jumped into gliding. So yeah, ultimately, like it would have to be something I'd wear both the backpack and the glider for and the backpack just uh, kind of killed it for me, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It is very big. Like I, I really like the the um, Shining Blade glider. Can't use it because if I change the die on it, it's massive expanses of canvas on that. Yeah. So it's, it's so much of a change that kind of needs to be made, even if they just have code that pulls the color from the glider into the backpack. Like, you can't actually change the die channel on the backpack itself. Right. But if you have a matching glider, it pulls those color channels, but I don't know if that's difficult either. All right, that seems fair. But uh, also in the gem store, we do have the Storm Gloves, which are 500 gems, and they also feature two die channels. So what what you guys think of these? At the bottom. Oh. Yeah. Um, they're basically, uh, they're a really good option for characters who have sleeves that come all the way down to the wrist. Mm -hmm. um, because like most gloves, right? Um, if you wear gloves with a sleeve skin, it, you're not really going to get much out of them, but with these you will. So I bought them just in case I ever want to use them with something like maybe a redesign or something like that. So I think they're a good buy for, um, people who are wearing stuff with long sleeves. That, and it's also not terrible for like having, uh, for like light armor characters, because most of the gloves for light armor are literally just... Just gloves. They're gloves yeah, they're very not flashy. Right yep. So and you know, this would be great for like with the die channels, elementalist, mesmer, necromancer. You can get them to look how you want them to look, like a color that matches whatever you're doing. Um also if you dye them using red and orange, you could, you know, shout this hand of mine is burning red. Nobody the, uh, the lightning them? texture on them Thank is the best. Thank you, H. I appreciate it. Um, the lightning, the, this is the same lightning effect that the mounts have. I, I always think it's a bit weak. I don't know. Maybe it's not. It's just me. It almost looks like you get, like, the permanent lightning hand effect that you get when you attune to air for elementalists. Yeah, it's a better effect than that, I feel like. But I have chaos gloves. And the for elementalists, and this is just me, but for elementalists, I have the, um... Is it Path of Fire, the Weaver gloves, where it's fire and ice. Yeah, I really like those for the. But the, I mean, these are cool. I just, I'm not gonna spend money on it. The die channels are so weird on them, though. Yeah, I the Stormbow. It's, it's a good point. I don't have yeah, Tavik says they pair well with the Stormbow. I liked the idea of the die channels. Um, they kind of do your fingertips one color, and then the rest of it another color with kind of a sheen. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, the one thing going on the effect is. While it isn't the most flashy lightning effect, it's still more of an effect, like animation effect, than we get on most armors. Um, most of the animation effects are going to be on an outfit, so I, I think I still think, especially for 500 gems, I think it's a good buy. Uh, outfit for... or legendary armor. At this yeah, point. yeah, um, and I think they're going to be since they only come up to here. I think they're going to be versatile too, to be used with more looks. So. I quite like I them. Think you're, I think you're going to have more luck with them meshing well with light armor and some medium armors. I don't know how well this would work with a lot of heavy armors. Just because yeah. 
heavy armors, the forearms are pretty much blank slates because heavy armor gloves are usually more like gauntlets that cover your whole forearm. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's definitely a, it caters to the light armor crowd because there's lots of robes and stuff, you know. So yeah, I, I quite like it. I'm gonna keep it in my back pocket. So it's like a a subtle like a subtler chaos glove, shorter subtler chaos gloves with yep. the lightning effect. So it's it's not it's flashy, but not too flashy. It's like just the right amount. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. Inks probably doesn't think it's flashy enough. It's okay. I mean, it doesn't. Not everybody likes super flashy, you know, effects. So, I mean, I don't. I I, I wouldn't. Personally, I wouldn't pay for it, but I already have the other options. So if I didn't know any other options, then maybe I would maybe. be more interested. You know? Yeah. There you go. Well, I'll, also, we think these videos were provided by Dolphy. So thank you, Dolphy, for showing off all these uh, gems or items so that you can purchase use them your gems more wisely. Um, and I didn't get anything for the community corner this week. Sorry. I, I didn't see anything on our Discord that was, you know, someone was doing stuff. So if you guys have anything. Community Discord? What's that? Well, Malthanis, it's what? our Discord that we use to share with our community. And we have a bunch of channels, things like that. And we also have a section called Community Corner. I think that's what it's called. And all the stuff that people in our Discord are doing, they post it there so that, you know, QD posts in there, Zekriox posts in there, but you know, their, their fractal stuff, their streams, all that good stuff. Oh, um, Snow Crows has updated benchmarks. Oh, and well, there you go. Snow Crows updated their benchmarks and builds. You can check them out at snowcrows.com. I'll leave a link for that in the in the YouTube description, so on and so forth. So go check them out. Uh, I'm actually going to check them out right after this. So, yeah. Uh, I know two boxes will be screwed up, but Jim, where can you be found, sir? I can be found on Twitter at MalthanisMMO. You can also find me here on twitch.tv slash talking script every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for our Zero to Hero ranked PvP night doing some Hollow Smith. I've been minus an early for the past two weeks because her motherboard died, though she's supposed to be getting her parts in on Tuesday, so maybe we'll be back in for some duo queue and ranked this week. Hope to see you all there. Oh, there you go. And uh, not Aaron, but Inks. Where can you be found, sir? Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at MMO Inks. Uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff on Twitch a lot, re a lot more recently. So come by and check out the the Twitch Twitch side of things. There you go. And I'm just gonna fix your overlay because I'm gonna like go nuts if I don't. Uh huh. <laughs> Right. And Aaron, who is also not Inks, but where can you be found, sir? Um, you can find me Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Gilders Monk. I've been streaming a lot on Twitch lately. Um, I stream like guys, I stream like every day. So um, if you want to go over to my Twitch and follow there, that's the place where I am the most. Um, I'm actually streaming tonight, 8 p.m. PST. So if y'all if y'all want to hang out, feel free to come by. There you go. Ugh. I really wish Aaron didn't do that. It's a bit, it messed me up so bad. Sorry. And you can find me on Twitch and YouTube at Age Night Road. I Thief Build. Uh, the Thief Guide video, I'm going to work on it all day tomorrow. And it'll probably come out Monday, if not Tuesday. Um, and please, someone hold me to it. Uh, because I don't want to be lazy to it. Um, and uh, that shaman also tweeted out his hieroglyphs, so I kind of missed that. So I'll, I'll put that also in show notes as well. I missed a lot of things. I was busy. I'm sorry. But uh, you guys can check out Talking Scrape here on Twitch. Uh, we do show every day at Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, 1 a.m. Pacific. And the show goes up on YouTube if you miss it. That goes up on Sundays at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we also have a Discord so that you guys can come check us out. Uh, links will all be in below. Also, if you want to find us on uh, YouTube or Twitch, you can just search Talking Script. Usually first come up. Uh, I want to thank 
all of the hosts would I, I I have the same problem Deo has currently and I can't see all the hosts. So um stream hype. Yeah, so for everyone who hosted us today or auto hosts us, we thank you very much. I'm probably missing a bunch of other things that Deo does for outro. So yeah, I'm gonna end it there. But uh yeah. Take care, guys. Be kind to one another, be good to another, and we'll see you next week. Take care, guys. Bye.